Hi, today is January 23rd, 2021. I'm looking at some art world news with a warm cup of coffee. So today I wanted to take a look at a couple of articles. One is in Architect Architectural Digest and is titled, Is This the World's Most Expensive Art Piece? Question mark. And uh, the other is on the Smithsonian Magazine and is titled, Stolen copy of Salvatore Mundi found stashed in Naples cupboard. Amazing. Um, I'll start with the first one in uh, Architectural Digest. Before I keep going, if you like this kind of content, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, here we go. So, here we go. Is this the world's most expensive art piece? Beer company Natty Light is the unlikely force behind the Da Vinci of Debt, now on view in Grand Central Station. I actually thought, um, just from looking at this title, that it was kind of a silly thing. It was kind of funny. Um, but, you know, let, let's keep going. Let's see where this goes. Natty Light, beloved cheap beer of choice for college students everywhere, possesses far more heart and soul than one might expect. Last week, Natural Light Beer unveiled a large-scale uh, project that evidences a depth of compassion for its customer base, a burgeoning advocacy streak, and a full-fledged understanding of not only art history, but also the important role architectural landmarks play within society. What, pray tell, could this possibly be? A sculptural installation that the company is referring to as the world's most expensive art piece. Let us explain. The work, which is actually titled Da Vinci of Debt, is a large-scale paper installation composed of 2,600 college diplomas. If each degree represented was priced at $180,000. That's a lot. Uh, the average cost of a four-year college education in the U.S., the sculpture would be valued at $470 million. Notably, that's more than the Da Vinci work Salvador Mundi sold for at auction in 2017, fetching $450 million. That's also, also a very... That's a lot. Um... It set a new record and made headlines at the time. Coincidentally, the work is once again in the news for another reason this week. The Italian police just recovered a stolen copy of the famed painting. Regardless, while all this explains the title and claim behind Natty Light's installation, its construction and location are striking in their own rights. The kaleidoscopic structure of the work invites passerbys, uh, passersby to cast their gaze upon, uh, gaze upward, thanks to its sheer monumentality of scale. What is more, thanks to the fact that the Da Vinci of Debt has been installed at Grand Central Station, it's likely to receive a fair share of viewership. Art fans not currently based in New York City can still see the work thanks to an online interactive feature. But for those most interested in the meaning behind the work and the current student debt crisis that impacts so many around the nation, Natural Light Beer is also putting its own money where its mouth is thanks to an ongoing 10-year, $10, $10 million commitment to help individuals pay off such student loans. Again, I thought this was kind of funny. Um, it's like a funny little article. I I don't take this work seriously um, because it kind of it kind of feels like a one liner to me. Um, so here's an image of the uh, of the of of the piece. Um, the intent I'm sure is good. Um, I have no you know real questions about the intent um, of it, but. To me, it just it lacks depth. Um, even though the representation of it is 
supposed to be impactful because of a commonly acknowledged social issue. It doesn't really feel like it has much substance. I mean, it just is a reminder. This is my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with me on this. Um, but I mean, we could, we could easily try to ask questions about mass indoctrination, especially for the millenn millennial generation, the almost corporatization of large learning institutions, or to try to look into the effects of fiscal and monetary policies that could have enabled um, the growth in the cost of the of education in the United States to just to, you know try and dive into a deeper position that leads to this sort of situation that that is to say this is a topic that could take in information from a lot of different avenues but even that doesn't leave the viewer with any sense of wonder or discovery. There's there's something I like to remind myself of when I look at art. Um, if you enter a room with expectations, you'll either be satisfied that your expectations were met or dissatisfied because they were not. There's no room for openness or for surprise because you've already placed a screen in front of how you'll perceive something. Um, you've basically preconditioned yourself before even having the chance to really encounter something for the first time or even for the next time. And because of that, being surprised or shifting uh, my position for a work of art is that much harder to do. Um, and in that sense, I, I feel that the content of the work carries preconditions that position how I might perceive the work um, without leaving much room for things to unravel. But then again, at the same time, I, I also don't really take it um, with a, a, a sense of, of gravity or seriousness. I, I, I smiled when I was reading the article. Um, so I'm just going to leave this as is and just let it settle. I want to move on to the next article. It's titled The Stolen Copy of Salvador Mundi Found Stashed in Naples Covered. The museum that owns the 16th century painting hadn't even realized the work was missing. Oh boy. <laughs> so this is uh, just an image. It's a take a look at it. Um, let's take a look at this article. So it says, uh, last Saturday, Italian police found a 500 year old copy of Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi hidden inside a bedroom cupboard in Naples. <laughs> uh, as first reported by ANSA, investigators recovered the work from the apartment of a not to be named, 36-year-old, who was promptly arrested on sus suspicion of possessing stolen goods. Interestingly, the museum's staff hadn't even realized that the artwork was missing. Due to the current health crisis, the uh, room where the painting is kept had not been open for three months. Uh, authorities found no signs of a break-in, making it unclear exactly when and how the religious scene was stolen. Um, whoever took the painting wanted it, and it's plausible, plausible that it was a commissioned theft by an organization working in the international art trade. You pr probably make like a video game or a, a movie about this because it, it sounds so funny. Um, according to the Associated Press, Naples police arrested the apartment owner after he shared a, quote, less than credible story of, quote, casually purchasing the painting at a flea market. The stolen Salvatore Mundi is one of around 20 surviving copies attributed to Leonardo's uh, followers. Like the original, the painting depicts Christ with corkscrew curls. He holds a crystal orb in one hand and raises the other in a blessing. In... 
2017, Leonardo Salvatore Mundi sold at auction for a record-breaking $450 million, despite doubts regarding its authenticity. One of just 20 or so paintings widely attributed to the artist, the work was supposed to go on view at the Louvre Abu Dhabi in September 2018, but the museum unexpectedly canceled the unveiling, and the painting hadn't been seen in public since. Speaking with the Associated Press, Police Chief Alfredo Febrocini uh, says the discovery was rewarding, quote, because we resolved a case before it was created, end quote. He adds... The painting was found, but its custodian hadn't realized it was stolen. We'll go back up to the to the painting here, um, and to uh, yeah. So I, I think the biggest mystery here for me is actually the 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 Louvre Abu Dhabi. Uh, <laughs> when did the Louvre transform from a cultural icon of France to a Disneyland enterprise? <laughs> And that's a little bit of a silly mystery to me. The Disneyification of places to go to is a very strange sort of concept to me. Um, also, I mean, investigators of the scene couldn't find any clues or indications of what happened at all. Like, why would the apartment owner share that you that he purchased the painting at a flea market? And also. Why did he stash it in a bedroom cupboard? If you if 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 I if you stole an item with a multi million dollar price, um, and knew that, would that really be the best decision one would make to hide or take care of an item? Uh, also, if if no one knew who was in possession of the painting, why would someone with the intent of stealing and keeping the painting come forward and say that they have it in their possession in the first place? I don't know the whole story, but it's clear that it, it, that this article is full of pockets with just no information at all. Uh, I, I I just think it's... A bit embarrassing for the Italian police departments because they seem like they're trying to sound like they have a strong footing in the situation when in actuality it really sounds like they had little to no clue about what was going on. Uh, anyhow, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it at that. I hope you have a good day and thanks for listening.